Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So a few days ago, an article was posted by the main quest titled We want to keep Star Stable relevant for the next 10 years. Interviews with game director Stacy Place and CEO. I'm gonna call him CEO because I'm gonna butcher his name. They talked about the future of the game, their goals, what they have to improve, game problems, updated characters more game mechanics and more. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you do, make sure to subscribe, it really means a lot and now let's get into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna summarize the article point by point and I'm also gonna share my thoughts and opinions and if you have anything to say, even if it's different from me, make sure to comment. I think we should have an open discussion and I don't want anyone to feel like they can't say anything even if everyone else says you know something different from you you're still entitled to your opinion and hey maybe a lot of people will agree with you but anyway here is the article in the beginning they talked about what sso actually is and who will be interviewed then the article is separated into two parts the first is the interview with stacy and the other is the interview with the CEO. The first part of Stacy's interview is called An Unusual Job, where she basically talks about her experience working with SSO, education, and previous jobs, and more things that I don't think are all that relevant for this video. The next part is called Old Tech New Problems. There it is stated that their long-term investment is to modernize technology on which Star Stable Online was built, as much of the internal tools are inefficient or difficult to work with. Stacy says that they are finally addressing this problem and there have been big improvements this year. Then the focus is turned to spring of 2021 when the SSO community found Star Civil Entertainment's Glassdoor reviews, several of which were many years old. Stacy states that they are aware of the reviews and that there is definitely some truth in some of these complaints. She continues that some people have misunderstood a term tech debt used in some of the reviews, which is actually an expression from software development to describe a situation where past shortcuts or outdated methods are causing issues with current development. Points out that they think it's important for a community to have this kind of discussions and says that many employees care about the players and quote unquote, we read every mail we get from players, even though sometimes people get pre-written answers it's all forwarded to relevant teams. I think the whole Glassdoor situation is being kind of dismissed because even though, yes, now there are definitely a lot of fake reviews there, but the reviews that were posted there many years ago and that say basically the same thing about very positive environment, but barely any, any space for personal or, you know, game growth are the same and I don't think people in like 2016, 17, 18, I don't remember when all the reviews were posted, but I don't think people from then were faking this because I don't think any SSO players even found it. So I don't think it's right to say it in this kind of way, but I do understand that, you know, she works for the company and she has to say, you know, this kind of uh, things in a certain way. And while I do believe that a lot of employees really do care for the players and the community, I think it's kind of untrue that they read from the players and, you know, they help them a lot because I haven't written to SSO in years, but from what I hear, you almost never get the answer that you're looking for and most of the time it's just some kind of copy-paste, so I don't really believe that part, if I'm being completely honest. But yeah, let's get into the next part, which is quite important and I'm sure a lot of you guys will be very interested in it and it's called Development Priorities, Quests and Horses. 
the interviewer points out that many long-term players want more quests to be added, to which Stacy responds, players want things to do and the story has to be continued. There's definitely a hunger for more endgame content and we want to deliver on that. She then adds that there hasn't actually been a dedicated quest team on SSO recently because people that were supposed to be working on quests kept getting other tasks. Stacy says it's always about juggling resources between new horses, events, and updating environments and character designs. It's been difficult to get resources allocated for the creation of new quests. But she adds that the future is promising as she already had a meeting scheduled later that day. Then it is also stated that we won't be getting any less horses as they are their main business, which keeps the game afloat, and that they take them seriously. I wonder how long recently means for them because I feel like there hasn't been a dedicated quest theme in years, if I'm being honest, because even when I started playing the game in 2015, there was a time where we didn't get new main story quests for four years and even now we either get a 10 minute quest or a recycled quest and I, I don't know, it just seems so insane that, I don't know, they don't even worry about it almost and just keep producing courses and obviously everyone understands that the game has to make money somehow and they're doing that through horses but I feel like in another article they talked about how much their earnings have increased in the past few years so I feel like if they really can't have uh, a quest team on the team along with people that they are already have you know, hired and working for them, they can at least hire new people and, you know, kind of combine them and do something because I cannot, like, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, I am a little, but I am disappointed, definitely. The next part is called Rebuilding Foundations. It is said that along all things previously mentioned, the Star Stable team is working on various systemic updates. Characters and environments are still being updated, the Dark Riders are going to get a new look very soon, and a new animation system has already been built into the game, although its potential will not be visible to players right away. Stacy then also says that they are working on an anti-cheat solution, which will be a relief to many competitive players. Stacy explains that there's a new framework for holiday events and in the future they will use more structured designs for holiday specials. Apparently they are working on a three-year plan for holidays. They're creating a basis so that the team can keep on building on. And this is what they meant by repaying the tech debt, improving and strengthening all the underlying systems and structures from the design, code, and art perspectives alike. Stacy states that they care a lot about the employees, they get a lot of vacations, sick time, and they rather delay game features than compromise the employees' well-being. They then finally talk about the updated characters and Stacy says the new character creation will offer a lot of varied options to express yourself. That's still a while away though. They then continued that the limitation to a female character will stay as it is a game about sisterhood, even though other genders can play SSO, their focus will be on girls. She then adds that there's a lack of horse games in general, but Stacy also expresses her disappointment in SSO's stance here because there would be so much room for a powerful statement on inclusivity by doing away with, with such gendered limitations. She continues, on the other hand, I still can't really fault this unbashly girly MMO game for sticking to its uniquely feminine focus in the industry where girls, be it as characters or as players, are still too often an afterthought at best. And it seems like we really aren't getting new characters soon, are we? In the blog that I posted, it sounded as though they are coming this year because 
even if we just look at other things that they mentioned, we we either got them already or they said that we're, we are gonna get them in one way or another this year. So I don't know, is this like another broken promise? I'm not sure about the structured festivals. Just yesterday I was thinking about how much I liked the Fortuna festival even though I took a part of it I think only two years or one. It was such a special moment and I really liked it and you know from now on we're probably on it only gonna get you know the same Halloween and the same this and the same that or they'll change a few small aspects of it which I don't really feel that good about. And on this I agree with Stacy. I think yes it is a game about sisterhood but at the same time they could just change the word to friendship for people who whose characters are you know not girls. I think this stereotype that only girls like horses is so outdated and I get that Star Sibley is trying to stand up for girls because you know other games they either don't even have a girl character or they look horrendous but I just don't think this is the way to go about it. And that's the end of Stacy's part of the interview, now on to the CEO. The first part of his interview is titled Star Civil Origins. He is introduced as the co-founder of Pixel Tales, he started as a writer and producer and then became a part of Star Civil Entertainment's board of directors until he became the CEO in 2017. He then talks a bit about himself. Later, the interviewer asks him how it all began and the CEO says they wanted to do something different than what most horror games were doing. Since the beginning, the essential philosophy of Star Civil games has remained largely the same. Girls deserve real games too and we want to make those. Initially, we did not have the budget or resources to fully deliver that, but the intent was always there. I think it's a nice message and I definitely think that when, you know, the first Star Stable games were developed and with that me I mean, you know, the Starshine Legacy and the OG Star Stable games that were on CDs, I do think that they were very important in order to shape you know, games for girls and, you know, that girls can also play games because that was more than a decade ago now and back then there were not, you know, many girl games and... But yeah, the next part of the interview is called Market Potential Then and Now. The CEO talks about how they wanted to create an MMORPG game for twin girls and after seeing some fan YouTube videos and playing World of Warcraft, they were set on it. They felt that the Flash game route didn't feel right and they wanted to offer a big open world. A few months later, they had their first prototype where people could ride through that open world side by side. The game then started to grow and many people that joined cared about the equine subject matter. And now, after a decade, despite the big and profitable audience that are horse lovers, Star Stable has no serious competition. The CEO says that the reason for that is demand for people who are truly passionate about horses. Another aspect that makes Star Stable a successful game is the amount of content that it provides. As I said before, I think it's really nice that they created this franchise because it means a lot to a lot of people. And I'm also really confused because there really aren't any big horse games. Like, yes, there's Alicia and Rival Stars Horse Racing, but they're essentially racing games and there's no like open world story or like horse oriented games such as SSO. And I do agree that Star Stable has a lot of content that you can do, but once you complete all the quests and get the reputation that you need, there's really nothing to do. So I just hope that they'll work on that. The next point is a decade in the saddle. The interviewer asks what's the most important way in which SSO and its development have changed and evolved all this time. The CEO answers that it's changed less than what you might expect. 
At first you could finish the game in a day, but now there are weekly updates to keep players coming back. Apparently the bar has been raised over and over. The CEO says our philosophy was always to release quickly, get feedback, iterate, release, fail and improve. We've been building on top of that ever since. And that's been a challenge. Scope and quality are really the biggest changes over time. The CEO states that for a long time they didn't focus on improving the game for players and were just adding at the end. Honestly, I don't really know what to say here. I think as much as, you know, weekly updates are good, they're also bad because they have to focus so much on this constant new things to be added that in the end they're sloppy. Uh, they look unfinished and they can't focus on long-term things such as main story quests or just the continuation of old quests that are left on cliffhangers because there's so many quests that, I don't know, you have to be a higher level to even get to that they just left and will probably never get back to. And now we're at the end of the article and the last part is called Many Goals Left to Reach. The big picture for Star Stable's future, according to the CEO, is to work on diversity and inclusion. They want players to represent themselves and to feel represented, but not only through the player avatar, but also in the world around them. They want to improve the experience of horse riding and bonding with your horse. They also have a mobile version so that people can play SSO anywhere they go. They listen to their players, take feedback and incorporate it. CEO emphasizes the importance of Star Stable's main story and says, we want to tell more spectacular stories with our fantastic cast of characters and let players be a part of the Soul Riders. A lot of our players are at the end of the current available story. We want to give them more opportunity with the character that we know and love. Continuing the main story is a continued effort and it takes time. He also says, please keep bombarding us with love and ideas for improvements. Keep playing, keep interacting with us with love and respect, but with honesty. We'll be glad to have you with us for the next 10 years. I agree with most of the things that he said, like the importance of representation and diversity. And I'm also very excited to see what he means with improved experience of horse riding and bonding with your horse. I think bonding with your horse would be such a cool me mechanic if they used it. I think a lot of people can agree with me that they don't really listen to the player's feedback and they don't incorporate it. I mean, sometimes they do, but most of the time I think it goes in one ear and out the other. And as he said, the main story takes time because it's such a big part of the game lore. But at the end of the day, there are so many players that are at the end of the available story. And I just hope that they give us something else. And that's kind of the end. There's also something about the birthday box giveaway. But it's not really important for this context. Anyway, what do you think about the article? Let me know down below in the comments, as always. And as always, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!